Yeah, so thank you very much for this um, opportunity to give this talk about Corpus de Wiki at your conference. And as being announced before, so this is our title, Corpus to Wiki, a tool automatically generating Wiki editions in digital humanities. I hope that you can understand me quite good enough. Uh, what is the background of this um, paper that we have produced here? Basically, we see some functions that we very often see in digital humanities what regards the dissemination of textual material. And regarding this material, this relates more specifically to the curation, edition, analysis and modeling of textual data. Now, having these functions in mind, so there is another big gap, namely the fact that many people from the humanities do not have the expertise in using computational methods. And exactly this is the gap that we want to fill by means of our technology called Corpus to Wiki, to allow people from the humanities to use our technology in order to generate high level, high standard level editions of textual material. This is a slide that shows you the workflow that we have behind this technology. It starts with a corpus that is called C in this example. And then we use our corpus to wiki technology that generates out of this text corpus, so-called wiki edition. And this wiki edition then contains a lot of different computational linguistic data that makes explicit structure in the underlying. One moment, please. So this is the big edition that we produce. This collects computational linguistic data being made explicit in the underlying text corpus. And then it makes this explicitly annotated data input to user interaction so that users can use the automatically annotated data to add their own code, their own annotations. So you get an extended big edition based on the corpus C and the user interaction based data. This in turn is then input to next round of augmenting the big edition by taking another input corpus that together with the given data being generated before produces the next round of and big edition. So that's basically the workflow of our system. And you see we have the two technologies, the corpus to wiki that generates the wiki edition. The question now is what are the functions being met by wiki editions? Well, the first and most important one is a linkification, as we call it. This means that we generate linguistic networks on different linguistic levels, like the word level, the sentence level, and the document or a text level. We do that intratextually, that is inside of text, and intertextually, that means between different texts. Here's an example from a famous novel from Franz Kafka, The Metamorphosis, Die Verwandlung, and you have the very famous introductory sentence, als Gregor Samsa eines Morgens, and so on and so forth. And the task would then be to take state-of-the-art technologies for recognizing sentence similarities like this one to make them explicit in the corresponding wiki edition of such a document. The next step is what we call lexiconization, that is starting from the input corpora being written by certain authors. We automatically extract the corresponding lexica of these authors and represent this data on three levels, on the super lemma level, the level of lemmata and the level of syntactic words. Here's an example in German, we have Tätigkeit, activity, for which we know, for example, that there is a historical correspondent written with like Tätigkeit, but with an H in between here at this position. And then we have an instance of it, what is called a syntactic word together with the corresponding flexion morphology and the attributes, the morphological attributes like nominative case and plural. So these are the representation levels for the main language and the author, but we can do that for also for other languages of other authors as far as they are embedded into the given input corpus. Then we have the very important requirement that all of that needs to be done in a form that requires no computational exper expertise by the end users. Remember that our end users are from digital humanities. And 
We do that by taking profit um, from the Wiki principle in terms of interactivity and extensibility because the output of our procedure is a Wiki and therefore it can be further um, generated and modified by its human users. That is, we combine by means of Wikidition, so to speak, the functionality of Wikipedia by means of Wikification, by mapping the documents to Wikipedia, by means of Wikisource in the sense of representing large documents like literary text, for example, and Wiktionary in the sense of our lexiconization procedure. Uh, the last um, function that we meet are the DH functions, the main functions of curation, analysis, edit, editing, and modeling. This, so to speak, the requirements analysis for our system. And now I turn to the question, what are the relations that we actually manifest in a Wik edition? And to this end, I switch, I withdraw from Yamslav structuralism, who distinguishes between syntagmatic relations of um, contiguity association and paradigmatic relations of similarity association. Actually, he distinguishes these relations asymmetrically and symmetrically. So we, for the time being, implement this only in terms of symmetric relations, dogmatically and paradigmatically, by distinguishing between word relations, sentence relations, and text relations. So, that means we implement text embedding software, sentence embedding software, and word embedding software in this single system, but also take profit of text reuse systems, of topic modeling, state of the art, and more modern one, those which we have developed on our own in our lab, text technology lab, but also address rather very traditional technologies like collocations, as they are very often required by humanities scholars, and even keyword in context, a technology from the last century. We do that by exploring the input corpus, by generating, by generating the lexicon, by means of lexiconization, but we also take profit of other resources outside of this system like Wikidata or Wikipedia. At the end, we can meet, by means of this technology, two basic principles. The first one being transitivity. What does that mean? In our system, each lexical, sentential, sentence related in any other linguistic unit that we recognize as a token in each of the articles is linked to its underlying type. So it's, each word token, for example, is linked to its lemma. Each sentence token is linked to the corresponding sentence lemma or sentence type. And moreover, um, on the other side, each such type reversely links to all its tokens. In this way, we get a commuting diagram in which we can tra tra traverse the network of text, sentences, and words in whatever perspective and from any direction. So we, you can start from the document level, for example, then you switch to the sentence level, or you do directly go over to the word level or whatever direction you have in mind. This is allowed by means of this inter-networking of the different representation layers of a Wiki edition. The second principle that we meet is reconstructability. That's very important for people from humanities. It means that all computational models are part of the edition. We have implemented this in a prototype, not in the one that will be later on being exemplified by Wahed, but in a prototype in a way that the vectors, the embedding vectors, for example, are directly accessible by users and can be further on manipulated for whatever scientific endeavor. Here's an example of an older implementation of a Wiki edition using a, a text from Franz Kafka in the Strafkolony, in the panel colony. You see, we have selected a sentence, and in this sentence, we select a certain word like apparat, and for, whole, for the whole sentence, then we get the paradigmatic similarities and the syntagmatic similarities, and we do the very same for the word level. Paradigmatic relations of apparat, apparatus to computing machine, for example, and um, here we have verbs being syntagmatically related to an apparatus.
We take another example, another word in the same sentence, like um, a traveling researcher. This is paradigmatically related on the word level to chemist and statistician and researcher, while being stigmatically related to words like well-known, admired, and extraordinary. And of course, we also do the very same on the sentence level. Also, we can distinguish between what is paradigmatically and stigmatically similar, or we do um, the same procedure for another sentence and also can distinguish between these different levels of association. Here you see a very small snapshot of a related document that is related to the whole document from which this sentence is drawn. So we now switch over to the implementation and this will be explained by Vaitemat. Thank you, Alexander. And uh, now I will show the implementation of Corpus to Wiki and how it produces a uh, wiki edition. Uh, can you all hear me? Hello? Yes, it works. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Uh, yes, the implementation. As Alexander said, uh, one principle of uh, Corpus to Wiki and wiki edition is uh, that it requires little computational expertise by the end user. And uh, for this reason, we uh, try to uh, build every component inside a portable Docker container, so it can be uh, run uh, f f from uh, each uh, from every uh, system, and it, it's uh, system independent. And for this, we uh, created a Corpus to Wiki container, which contains the Media Wiki itself, some extensions uh, we uh, built from our own. This, these are some visualization extensions the importer, the corpus importer, and finally the text imager client, which is uh, a client for processing uh, the documents with, with the text imager server. I will explain later on what the text imager server is. And uh, finally, we have uh, the MariaDB, which is also a container which uh, holds the, the, the information from, from the media wiki. Yes, and the procedure looks like this. Uh, you have uh, your input corpus, your documents, uh, which can be uh, raw TXT or uh, zipped files. These corpora uh, get uh, transferred to the to the text imager client, which then uh, sends the, the documents and the information to, to the text imager server, which is a distributed uh, server architecture uh, run on our servers. Uh, this uh, architecture uh, analyzes the documents on uh, different uh, linguistic uh, levels like uh, tokenization, lemmatization, part of speech tagging, uh, syntax similarity and uh, semantic similarity. And these information are then uh, uh, sent back to the, to the, to the Corpus to Wiki uh, container, which are then uh, uh, processed in the post-processing uh, step to be uh, transformed into a media wiki uh, structure. So uh, the, the, the corpus is uh, analyzed by text imager and then input to a, to a media wiki. And the final result can be viewed on a web browser. The back end of, of text imager, well, this, this part here, the processing part uh, looks like this. Um, uh, we have a, a multi-server system, as you can see on the right side, and the, the client implementations, which uses the, the, the server system. And one of the client implementations are uh, the, the construction of, uh, of a wiki edition. So the procedure looks like this. Uh, the, the, the wiki edition or the corpus to wiki is sending the corpora to the, to the back end, the backend then constructs the, the, the necessary pipelines. And in this pipeline, you have uh, multiple uh, services and each service has uh, uh, is an implementation of an NLP annotator. For instance, a tokenizer, a part of speech tagger, uh, named entity recognizer and so on and so forth. And each of these services are distributed on, on multiple servers. And this architecture guarantees the, the processing of large amount of, of data. So with our system, we are able to, to analyze big amount of, of uh, data and uh, analyze big corpora. 
yeah, after the uh, initialization, after the processing uh, is done, the, the information is sent back to the to the uh, to the corpus to wiki for creating a wiki edition. And uh, finally, the result uh, looks like this. It's uh, the, the newest version of, of Corpus to Wiki. Uh, yes, and I will demonstrate now as, uh, how, how the installation and the import of, of documents uh, work. Uh, we published all the code of uh, Corpus to Wiki on uh, GitHub, so you can uh, download, uh, manipulate, and uh, extend the, the code as you wish. It's uh, open access. And um, the procedure for installation looks like this. Uh, first of all, you need a Docker and Docker Compose, which is uh, actually uh, available on every platform like Linux, Windows, and um, Mac. The second step is to download this repository. And finally, after downloading the repository, you have to run only this uh, initialization script, which is uh, a script inside the repository. You can, before uh, running this uh, script, you can also modify some, some parameters like, like uh, the MediaWiki admin user, the password and stuff like that for security reasons. But if you just run it, you will get the default parameters. After the installation, the, the installation process will take about 10, 10 to 15 minutes till, till, the, uh, till all necessary containers and, and dependencies are downloaded and set up. And after the installation, uh, you get an import uh, interface, uh, which uh, can be uh, called from, from this uh, uh, URL. It's it's the default URL of of the installation, and the import interface looks like this. You have an uh, an input field uh, where you can drag and drop your corpus, or you can just select a corpus, which can be a TXT or a, a zip file. I prepared here a, a simple one. It's uh, an article of the Tagesschau from uh, with the content of Corona. You have to select your language. In this uh, example, it's German, and that's all uh, you need to do. Then uh, you have to upload and process. And uh, this procedure will again take like uh, 10 to 15 minutes till till the whole uh, uh, wiki edition is uh, processed till the till the construction of the wiki edition. And for demonstration purposes, we prepared uh, an example namely the Kafka uh, example, and we deployed it on, on this uh, website. And here you can see uh, the output of, of uh, Corpus to Wiki, which is a uh, Wiki edition. And uh, this uh, Wiki edition uh, contains uh, a corpus of uh, Franz Kafka with two, uh, two, uh, two books of him. And uh, here you can see uh, corpus statistics like part of speech distribution and every uh, document is clickable, as you can see here. As Alexander showed before, you can uh, see then uh, the analyzed uh, document, which has key sentences, keywords, and sentences inside the document. And uh, as you can see here, you can hover over uh, a, docu uh, a word, and you get uh, information about the word. It's uh, the word level uh, information. Here you have uh, the word itself which is linked to to a wiki page containing information about about this word about the word apparat uh, containing uh, paradigmatic similarity and syntax uh, syntagmatic similarity as alexander uh, showed uh, before and the same is on the sentence level and on the text level you have paradigmatic similarity and syntagmatic similarity and as you can see here, you can click each of these words to, to get to the uh, corresponding uh, uh, lemma uh, page of, of the word uh, uh, apparat. And here's uh, the lexicon page of, of the apparat. Here you can, uh, on the right side, you can see the information about uh, the lemma apparat uh, inside the corpus, uh, like uh, 
the, the frequency, the text frequency, and, and so on, and the part of speech. Uh, a list of uh, morphological uh, 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 about the morphology, morphology of of the word, and again, each of these forms has has its own uh, uh, page again. And here you can see a graph of the paradigmatic similarity uh, of words uh, uh, similar to the to the word apparat. As you can see here, Rechenmaschine, Vorgang, Vorrichtung and so on and so forth. And each of these uh, uh, nodes have, have again, uh, its own page and is, uh, it's clickable like, like this one. You see the information of Russian Maschine. And if you scroll down, you see the syntagmatic similarity, again, uh, with, uh, with the nodes uh, clickable and uh, which are linked to the, to the corresponding pages. Yeah, and uh, finally, you have the concordance of uh, of the word apparat and uh, uh, how it is used inside the corpus. And each of the each of the appearance of of the word apparat is is listed here. And it uh, also in, in in different syntagmatic, uh, uh, yeah, in all. And again, every every word is uh, clickable and has its own uh, page a link to it like here, umlief, umlaufen, and you get again the, the page. Yes, this was uh, a quick demonstration of uh, Corpus to Wiki and uh, Wikidition. And uh, Alexander is uh, concluding uh, the the presentation. One second. Okay, here I'm again. Um, some words at the end. I will not present too much of theory, but just let me point to the fact that we try to implement a certain notion of reading by means of big edition that we call machine close reading that can be opposed to what is called machine reading, distant reading, and human close reading. I won't go into the detail or details of this slide, but it's important to know that we bring together, so to speak, what is automatically done by means of our apparatus and what human beings can do further on in elaborating the big editions. And the next point then, or the last point is that from the point of view of literary studies, literary science, uh, our apparatus opens the possibility to a whole bunch of different analysis that oppose what is called a hypertext in the literary sense to its underlying hypotext in terms of the quantity of the text being related with each other, whether you have a single hypertext and a single hypotext or more than that, as you can see here by the different combination possibilities. And what we also have done is that we have enumerated for all the different possible combinations a corresponding example. This is joint work, what you see here on this slide with my colleague Wagner and Biba, who both stem from the area of literary studies. So that's basically our talk. Thank you very much for your audience and hope you have some questions. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander and Rohit. Uh, I think uh, you see it already uh, in the chat that the people agree with uh, that this is really awesome and this really an interesting and impressive work. Uh, what you have done so far, uh, the visualization of content structures. Uh, I, I can't remember uh, that I have seen something similar so far. And um, with my, my you know, academic background, I can imagine um, some more use cases and, uh, and how much work it is to make this uh, possible. So, um, uh, yeah, there is a, there are some questions. Um, Michael Barilak is questioning uh, has a question. What are the practical applications for the man in the street um, detecting that a thesis has been lifted from some other sources? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this this question has to be answered basically by the persons who would take profit from using our technology. And um, as I am cooperating here at the university with a lot of people from other humanities departments, I'm here in the computer science departments, of course, but nevertheless, I see that those people really have the problem that they can't use a state-of-the-art technology that allows them to make the editions of their work. You have to imagine that you digital humanity, so to speak, the status quo of all those scientific disciplines and the humanities. So you can't do without, even if you are an older professor, you can't do without uh, digital methods right now. Uh, however, uh, we still have the problem that the equipment with such expertise and with with such tools has not the standard as it would be required for those people to perform that task. So I would say there are a lot of applications in this respect that's very overt uh, from the normal, for the normal person on the street, uh, that's difficult to answer for me. I would say whenever you have the situation that you would like to, to understand a little bit more about the associative network that underlies your document, you could use a technology like that one. And I'm sure um, as comparable to the Wiki principle, it would allow you to, to read, so to speak, much faster, a whole bunch of different documents than doing that without such a technology. I hope this gives an answer mm -hmm. to your question. Uh, I, I see there are some more questions like, um, how is it then used in, uh, in, uh, in the scientific world? Um, uh, I see comparative literature, linguistics, so, uh, but you said already that depends what um, what what the users are working on. Absolutely. I mean, what we can't do is, so to speak, to define what the hypothesis of this research is. What we can do is, if a person has a hypothesis of which she or he knows that she needs scientific computational methods to answer it, then we can, so to speak, provide the bridge to help her to answer the corresponding question. However, the, the, the ultimate interpretation of the data, this is still the work of the corresponding scientific work. Out the humanities mm -hmm. there is there is one remark of Bernhard Krabina which I can uh, underline. Um, so maybe it would be an idea to add um, semantic media wiki on on the wiki. Um, mm -hmm. for, for, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for, just for making things better searchable or uh, exportable, and and these can set filters or whatever uh, of the, mm -hmm. for, for for triple uh, queries. So that, that yeah, could yeah. be very interesting uh, in the future, maybe. But you have the experts here in the room and at the conference, you can contact them every day. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, um, so please, absolutely. This is a very important point, and that's also one of the reasons why we decided to go to your conference, because we'd like to get into contact with people who have this expertise in semantic web. And of course, we know that technology quite well, but at the starting point of what we have done, as you have seen in our presentation today, was rather the application of computational linguistic software that is more explorative. However, we know uh, this whole branch of knowledge graphs and semantic webs, and, of course, would like to amalgamate, so to speak, the best of both words with each other. So please feel free to contact me, and I'm sure we will find a way to cooperate. Yes. Yeah.